Welcome back to the channel. This week, we're going to be talking about rheumatoid arthritis, one of the big rheumatological conditions that we see throughout our practice. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune systemic condition that often presents with swollen, painful, small joints with associated stiffness. Over time, and with insidious onset, some of the large joints do get involved, with numerous organs being involved with systemic upset. Patients may also have a positive squeeze test across their hands and feet, indicating active disease. Later features include swan neck deformity of the fingers and boutonniere nodules on the distal interphalangeal joints. These are rarely, however, seen on presentation. Diagnosis can often be done clinically with the support from immunology and rheumatological criteria. The American College of Rheumatology set about specific criteria that requires a certain score to aid diagnosis. We won't go into detail, but it involves the severity of joint involvement, serology, inflammatory markers, and the duration of symptoms. Serologically speaking, it's important to be familiar with two specific antibodies. Rheumatoid factor, an anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide antibody, or anti-CCP, of which the latter is far more specific to rheumatoid arthritis than the ironically and aptly named rheumatoid factor. Both are present in about 70% of cases, but rheumatoid factor is also positive in a number of other connective tissue disorders. There are a number of symptoms and issues which may help predict a poorer prognosis, some of which are positive rheumatoid factor and anti-CCP, the presence of HLA-DR4, early X-ray changes such as erosions and other features that include loss of joint space, localised osteoporosis, swelling and bony erosions, extra articular manifestations, and those with slow and insidious onset. Let's move on to extra articular manifestations. There are a number of issues that occur outside the joint in rheumatoid arthritis. Most notably in the lungs, there is complications of pulmonary fibrosis, pleural effusions and nodules. Additionally, fibrosis and interstitial lung disease can occur as a result of therapy, particularly for methotrexate. In the eye, the most common cause is keratoconjunctivitis sicca, a severe dry eye, as well as episcleritis and scleritis. There's also an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Classically, in exams, you may be examined about Felty syndrome, which is an extremely rare condition compiling a rheumatoid arthritis, splenomegaly and leukopenia. There's also a higher risk of developing osteoporosis and infections. So let's move on to management. NICE recommend the initiation of DMARDs, or disease-modifying anti-rheumatoid arthritis drugs, as soon as feasibly possible with the new recommendation of DMARD monotherapy plus a short bridging of prednisolone to cover any acute flare-ups. The most commonly started DMARD is methotrexate. However, this requires constant monitoring of the full blood count and liver function test in view of the side effects which include minor suppression and liver fibrosis, as well as monitoring the symptoms of lung disease, as we mentioned before, such as lung fibrosis and pneumonitis. There is also recommendations to avoid methotrexate in women around childbearing age if possible, with methotrexate itself taken weekly, usually alongside folic acid. Other DMARDs include sulfasalazine, which also can cause pneumonitis and myelosuppression, as well as oligospermia. It classically also stains tears, and there's also some relation to Stephen Johnson syndrome. Hydroxychloroquine is a drug that used to be used in malaria treatment, but can cause severe retinopathy, and leflunamide, which usually causes a GI side effect, as well as myelosuppression and lung pneumonitis. Subsequent treatment often involves immunotherapy, such as TNF-alpha inhibitors, usually after the usage of at least two DMARDs has failed. These include infliximab, etanercept, and adalimumab, of which the former two can cause reactivation of tuberculosis, with etanercept also causing demyelination of the nerves. Acute flare-up of rheumatoid arthritis is often managed by steroids, with inflammatory markers, particularly CRP, useful to monitor disease activity. And that's that. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that gives you a better idea of rheumatoid arthritis and its management. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. Make sure you check out our Instagram page, dorky underscore docs, where there's loads of revision content available there, and our growing Facebook community, where we discuss the AKT exam in length. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.